Hi, it's Michelle from Lab Muffin Beauty Science, Chemistry PhD, and fan of research-based skincare products. If you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen that earlier this year, I got to tour Biogemis facilities in France. I got to ask their science team tons of questions and take lots of notes. Today I'm going to be talking about some of the products in Biogemis Seabeam range, and this video is produced in partnership with Biogemis. If you've been following me for a while, you'll know that I've used lots of Biogemma products in the past, and I've reviewed a lot of their products on my blog as well. I think the earliest one would have been in 2013, which is six to seven years ago. So a bit of background on Biogemma and why I've been into them for so long. Biogemma are a very science-focused French dermocosmetic brand. And unlike a lot of other brands that mostly base their products around science-backed ingredients, Biogemma go a few steps further, and they actually do their own original research. And they do this in conjunction with universities and dermatologists and other experts. If you look up Biogemma on a journal database like Google Scholar or PubMed, you'll see some of their publications in some pretty prestigious journals like the Journal of the American Academy of Dermatology, the European Journal of Dermatology, and the Journal of Cosmetic Dermatology. Their main specialties in research are acne, sensitive skin, and sunscreens, and this is reflected and a lot of their really innovative products, which I've talked about before. So for example, they invented micellar water, and the Atoderm range is recommended by dermatologists and the Eczema Association of Australia. If you're interested in more behind-the-scenes info on how they develop, manufacture, and test their products, I have a blog post all about that. Like I said before, Bioderma are a dermocosmetic brand. There's a tradition in France where if you have a skin problem, you go to a parapharmacy. And in the parapharmacy, you talk to a pharmacist about what problems you have, and they'll recommend you the right skincare products from one of these dermocosmetic brands, which are usually formulated with the science behind how skin works in mind. And if you've ever been to a French parapharmacy, you'll know why this process is important, because there are a lot of products, it can be pretty overwhelming. So today I'm going to try to help you out. If you've ever looked at the Sebium range and wondered which product is right for you, then I'm going to be doing a deep dive on each of them. Now you mostly hear about acne in the context of like teenage skin, but adult acne is a growing problem. Adult acne is when you have acne over the age of 25, and it's estimated that up to about 40% of adult women have this problem. The same four factors lead to both adolescent acne and adult acne. They are overproduction of sebum, which is skin oil, clogged pores, overgrowth of acne bacteria, and also inflammation. Acne treatments will target one or more of these four factors. The problem is a lot of these acne treatments are quite harsh. They tend to be keratolytic, which means that they increase how quickly your skin sheds. And so if your skin is shedding much faster, that can lead to sensitivity and dryness and harshness. The sebum range has three main aims. Firstly, it tries to help your skin prevent further acne by using very gentle actives. Secondly, it helps your skin repair its own barrier function so that it's more resilient and so it's less sensitive. And thirdly, it tries to counteract the effect of these harsh medicated actives that you might be using by hydrating your skin. There are a few patented ingredient blends that Bioderma has put into the Sebium range. A lot of Bioderma products, including this whole Sebium range, contain a group of five ingredients known as DAF. And these help make skin more resilient. So it reduces skin reactivity, reduces the permeability of the skin, and it reduces free radicals. In some of the moisturizers, there's the fluid active complex, which helps decrease sebum levels and regulate the quality of sebum. So people with acne tend to have more squalene in their sebum, and this can oxidize. And when it does, it leads to clogged pores as well as irritation. Fluid Active contains antioxidants, which have been shown to decrease the oxidation of squalene. Bioderma have lots of clinical trials to back these up, and I'm going to link the patents in the description if you're interested in reading a bit more. So onto the Sebium range. Today I'm going to be talking about five products. There are two cleansers, two moisturizers, and one moisturizing makeup primer. So the first product is the Sebium H2O Micellar Water. I've talked about these micellar waters before and how they work. So what's special about the Sebium Micellar Water? Well, it contains actives that act to help with acne. Firstly, it contains zinc and copper, and copper is the reason why it has this blue color. Copper is mostly antibacterial, and it's the reason why you shouldn't use this around your eyes, because it can sting your eyes. There are a few studies that suggest that zinc might help with acne, so it might decrease sebum levels, it's antioxidant, and it might also help reduce the acne bacteria as well. The way you use it is you pour it onto a cotton pad and then wipe it over your face. So one of the questions I get a lot about micellar water is, is it okay to leave it on your skin? 
because as you guys might know if you've heard me talk about this in the past, surfactants are often irritating. And the answer is, it really depends on the micellar water and what ingredients they use, especially the surfactant. So for Bioderma, all of the ingredients in their micellar water are also found in leave-on products, including the surfactant, so they're fine to leave on your skin. You can still rinse it off if you want, but that does mean that you're getting rid of the benefits of the rest of the ingredients in the micellar water. There's also the fact that in Bioderma's micellar waters, they actually use something called PPI water, which is water that's so pure that it's fine for injection. So if you're in an area where the water is maybe a bit hard or maybe not entirely clean, then it's probably beneficial to not rinse it off and just not contaminate your face with that extra water. I've been finding the micellar water really, really good for when I'm in a rush, when I don't have time or the opportunity to wash my face, like on the plane or after going to the gym. The other cleanser in the range is the Seabeam Gel, which is a wash-off foaming cleanser. It has gentle surfactants, it's got sodium cocoa ampho acetate and sodium laureth sulfate. Having a combination of surfactants makes a cleanser more gentle. It also contains lots of humectants, which keep your skin hydrated, and so it doesn't feel tight or stripped after you finish cleansing. Now, I know a lot of people are against foaming cleansers, and I think the reason for this is that a lot of older foaming cleansers tend to be quite harsh and stripping. But newer foaming cleansers, if they're designed properly, they don't have this problem, so they, they're designed to be gentler to your skin, and so they don't necessarily strip your skin more than a non-foaming cleanser. I've been using this gel cleanser for a few weeks now, and I like that it leaves my skin feeling really plump and hydrated. I've also been using it on my back because I do get a little bit of back knee as well, it can also be used as a shaving gel if you want. Onto the moisturizers. So both of these moisturizers contain lots and lots of glycerin, which as you might know, is my favorite humectant. And it's over here. Humectant moisturizers help hold moisture onto your skin surface, and they're not oil-based, which means that for oily skin like mine, they tend to be really nice. Glycerin is a particularly special humectant moisturizer because firstly, it's already in your skin, Secondly, it works on something called aquaporins, which is water channels in your skin. And it's also been found that it doesn't dehydrate your skin even without putting anything else on top. So firstly, I have the Sebium Sensitive. This is particularly special because it's designed for acne prone skin, but it doesn't have any keratolytic action, which means it doesn't increase your skin turnover. So this means it's really good for sensitive acne prone skin where you're already using something that's keratolytic. So things like retinoids like adapalene or tretinoin above 0.025% and you're seeing a bit of dryness and peeling and irritation. I really like this because it's really hydrating, but it's still mattifying. So it's really good for daytime use. It's got 20% glycerin and it claims to give 12 hour hydration. What's also cool about this is that it contains Seabear Restore, which is where they've combined the fluid active with Bacutiol, which you might know is a trending ingredient. What's quite interesting is that Bioderma did a clinical trial and they found that Seabear Restore made other changes to the sebum composition as well. So after two months of using it twice daily, they found that there was an increase in antibacterial lauric and sapienic acid and also an increase in linoleic acid as well. There was also a decrease in oleic acid, and so generally what this means is that you have better sebum quality that doesn't clump as much. As well as Sebo Restore, it also contains Inflastop, which blocks inflammatory messengers in the skin. And so what this means is it reduces acne, and it can also reduce post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. This is the brown spots that you get after the acne goes. The sensitive is also really soothing, it hydrates and restores the skin barrier, and it actually has been found to reduce the side effects of acne medications. So things like redness, dryness, itching, and burning sensations. So this one has a really light mattifying texture, but if you're after mattifying, there is a product which I'm gonna talk about a little bit later, which might be even better for you. Now, if you're using even stronger acne medication like isotretinoin, which is in Roaccutane, this is an oral medication that you take, then you might be more interested in the Sebium Hydra. This is the most hydrating of the moisturizers and it really targets skin that has red patches and lots of flaking. Again, it's got lots of humectant glycerin. It's also got ceramides as well as some mineral oil. And mineral oil, even though 
although there's a lot of rumors that it's comedogenic, it's actually not. And it's actually one of the best oils for acne prone skin because it's very bland. It's also very stable, so it doesn't oxidize or change on you. There's also allanton and anoxalone, which soothe your skin and reduce redness. Personally, I like using the sensitive during the day under makeup and I use the hydra at night, even though I'm not using isotretinol. My skin is really dehydration prone and it's winter. So I really appreciate the extra hydration. The final product I'm talking about today is the sebum matte control. This is a really great product if you have oily skin and you want to control the shine, but you also want some skincare benefits as well. So it has a lot of the ingredients that are in the rest of the range. It's got glycerin, it has the fluid active, it has zinc as well. It's also got salicylic acid, which is exfoliating and reduces the pore size. It's also got mushroom extract, which contains agaric acid, which again reduces the appearance of your pore size. Like a lot of other makeup primers, it's also got mattifying and blurring ingredients. And so it has that immediate blurring effect, but it also has a longer term effect as well. Because this is so mattifying, it's best if you use it just on the oily areas. So for me, that's the T-zone as well as these bits here. So I hope this was an informative deep dive on these products and it helped you work out which products are best for your skin. Let me know what other brands you want me to look at in the future as well. If you enjoyed this video, you can also check out the rest of my videos and like and subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook and check out my blog as well. See you next time.